Today we'll cover the last remaining modifications I made to turn my cheap K40 laser cutter into a budget beast. These mods are easy and they're not expensive. Anyone can do them to take their K40 through to being a really valuable piece of shop equipment. Last year I got this K40 laser cutter and in a previous video we even covered all the existing modifications I did which consisted basically of the air assist nozzle, a slightly different bed design, and a few other minor things. Today we'll cover the remaining items I did. This was some months ago and this has a lot of time under it now and it's working like a champ. These are the items we'll do today. Each one upgrades the K40 into something a little better than it was before. All these components came from Amazon or even my local pet store for the uh, aquarium heater, but uh, I'll put all the links down below. They're also going to be added to my GitHub repository where I keep all my information on this laser cutter and the mods I've done to it. Since I was going to be cutting up the control panel to add the new gauges in, I like to sort of lay things out and just get a look at where I want them to be or how it's going to turn out. I thought about actually laser cutting an entirely new panel and mounting everything in. And I might do that later, but for now I think it's much easier just to drill things out, set it in, see how it works for a little while, and then we can swap it all later if we desire. As I mentioned, all the links will be below and in my GitHub. This uh, temperature and flow meter was from Banggood. You can buy these on Amazon as well. They're designed for uh, computers, for performance PCs and whatnot. I was a little disappointed because I thought the flow meter would actually measure flow, but you just have to watch it spin. This is the jack for holding the bed up and being able to adjust the bed up and down. It works wonderfully. I didn't even end up bothering to tie the bed down to it. The reviews on these things are stellar. It's a pretty simple device. And then this is the bed itself. It's just a honeycomb material, much better than what we had done previously. Uh, much surface area, uh, less surface area, and allows the laser to go down through and not be reflected back, which means it won't burn the bottom of your material. And the ammeter, nothing to it. Don't be fooled by some of the vendors. These are all the same everywhere. You can get them on Amazon, eBay, all kinds of sources. Nice and cheap. This episode brought to you in part by PCBWay. Check them out at the link below for your next electronics project. They offer competitive rates for all PCBs, parts, and assembly, as well as 24-7 tracking of your order from start to finish. Last winter I ran automotive coolant, this year I decided to try this RV stuff. I lost the footage of me actually putting it in, basically pour it in the bucket, dump the aquarium heater in there, and I even put a battery warmer for cars uh, around the outside of my five gallon bucket. Works like a champ. Next steps were just drill out the holes for the panel, nothing to it. I couldn't get the labeling off the top side, so I had to sort of put some tape on and try and hold it in place while I cut through with my saws. Uh, it wrinkled the outside a little bit, but as you'll see later, it's not even noticeable later on. Wiring for the amp meter is really, really simple. You just put it in series with the, the power to the tube and away you go. Some simple hand tools is all you need for this job, but you do need uh, to do it right. You need some uh, ringlets here and some ferrules for the wire ends just to put things together real nice. The only thing I ran into is on these connectors, because they're so full now, already multiple terminals in one spot there, uh, it was easiest for me to take them out, cut them back, and then put new ferrules on the end so that I wouldn't have to jam a third in there or even a second. It's easier to put all the, the wires into the crimps. So. Pretty simple stuff, just follow the schematic. The uh, the flow meter, it's just hooked to power and ground on the power supply and works just fine. Don't need to run an external one or anything. Power supply has the outputs there, why not use them? Here you'll see me take some pictures of the wiring in the terminal blocks. I always do this that way. I always have a reference of where things came from. 
And I'll put a little note on the screen here. This goes for all, all industries that you work in or pretty much all tasks. Don't rely on the book to tell you where things were because quite often production is different than the design environment. So this way we have a reference exactly where things were and we knew they worked. So we can always put it back. Cutting and stripping our wires, nothing to it. Just follow the published schematics online. Lots of reference as well as in my GitHub. No problem. This was my first power up, uh, always a little bit nervous, triple checked everything, but when I went to fire it up, no issues. This, this looks pretty good. I'm happy with the layout. I'm happy with the way things work and the functionality. And I, I like that temperature and flow meter gauge. It's, it's kind of slick. It is a, it's an addition to the one I already have. And at least uh, this one is right in line, a little more trustworthy than just a temp sensor stuck to the outside of the tubes like the original is. Why not? Works pretty good. Ammeter connections, super simple. Cut, splice them in, no issues. There was plenty of wire to work with under this cover. And it was pretty easy to cable manage everything and keep it looking pretty spiff considering. Uh, it's not an area that I'm in very often, but I think it turned out pretty good. Everything turned out pretty good here. I'm quite happy with the layout and the look and fit and finish. It's pretty functional. This is where I put my flow meter out the back. I've seen people mount these on the top or above the laser tube. I don't think that's a good idea. This is a potential weak point that could leak and we don't want it leaking inside the control panel or inside the laser cutter. Much better to have it leak outside. Now all that's left, retrofit this bed. The bed installation was super, super simple. All the little vertical standoffs are just screwed in from the bottom of the laser cutter. I simply removed all those and then removed the existing plate that I had already installed and just set my little adjustable stand and this honeycomb bed in place. It's just balanced there, there's nothing to it. I could fasten that more permanently, but for now I kind of like it like this because if I want to go back to cutting say face shields, the COVID-19 face shields I was cutting, well I can put the original bed back in because I left those standoffs out in the, the outside corner corners there you can see so yeah I'm super happy with this this works it may seem a little flimsy and funny but I also have a roller attachment that I'm planning on setting in so this allows me quick in and out and easy to change configurations or change the setup and it just works I've been using this for over eight months now and everything is just fully functional exactly how I wanted it with the increase in airflow possible because of the large honeycomb spacing, you'll note that there's no smoke or anything. It is entirely down through. And this is with the stock fan. I have not changed the fan. Uh, you saw in the previous video, I removed that silly ductwork that everyone thinks will increase mass flow. It does not. It chokes the mass flow. The original fan works fine when you remove that and see no burning on the backside except in that one little bit in the corner because that was over the edge on the honeycomb touching the, uh, the outside frame. But yeah, the results are just fantastic. Super happy with this. This is three millimeter Baltic birch and it just cuts through it. No issues every time. These are cases for my rescue project. You can see the temperature climbing and we can see our other temperature display. It agrees with it. And then our milliamp reading, which is just slightly below kind of max. Everybody seems to agree that about 18 milliamps seems to be the max and yeah, no issues. Where the K40 really shines is acrylic. This is three millimeter acrylic that I'm using for rescue cases as well. Um, low to medium power, it doesn't matter. This slices through it like a hot knife through butter. It's just, there's something super satisfying about cutting acrylic and then popping the pieces out of the, the remaining frame. I just love it. This, this alone, being able to make acrylic cases for maker projects 
is worth the price of admission for the K40 laser cutter. If you're a maker, this thing, this is where it shines, is making small scale cases for electronics or fun little hobby projects or arts and crafts as well. You wanna have set up an Etsy store? Well, this will get you there. You could definitely make a living with one of these. Um, reliability, I don't know. I don't drive mine all day, every day, but I've had no issues and anything that goes wrong is easily repairable. I hope this helps you with your laser cutting adventures. Throw a comment and a like down below if you uh, watched this far. I really appreciate it, guys. Uh, I, I really like this thing. You can't go wrong. These are definitely worth every penny. You just have to be willing to put a few minutes worth of work into them. And the quality of product that you get out of it is just, it's just mind blowing to me. I love it. It's, uh, it's one of my favorite tools. So cheers, guys. Good luck in all your projects.